Okay, welcome back section four. Um, in this section, we will um, make our wave bend. So we will bend it um, instead of having this boring stiff curve. Um, as we move the slider, it will bend uh, in the opposite direction. Um, so to begin with, we want to do some code cleanup. We are going to create a new class called wave curve definitions. And this will be all of the variables that we talked about here, um, just in a, a class, a data class. So I'm quickly going to do that. Okay, so we have the data class. Um, next, we want to create a, a method called calculate waveline definitions. So instead of doing all the calculations within this paint wave line, we want to do a separation of concerns and we want to um, extract that into a, separate, in a, into a separate method. So calculate wave line definitions. Oh, for now, we don't need to pass in any variables. We're just gonna steal all of this. Okay, and next up, we want to create a wave line definitions wave curve definition sorry wave curve definitions uh, wave curve wave definitions let's call it this equals to calculate wave line definitions and for this we will return a wave curve definitions and then we can return wave curve definitions wave curve equals two wave curve definitions and return this value wave curve and for this we will define all of these values okay perfect um, let's rename this to wave curve and wave curve that starts Okay, perfect. So now instead of defining, a, of defining all the variables within this paint wave, we have separated into this function that does the definition, like the calculates the definitions for us, and it returns this data class called wave, well, mock data class called wave curve definitions. And then we can access all of these, um, these variables from, uh, from that class. Um, next, we can maybe just do a double check to make sure everything is working okay we don't have any problems uh, perfect so next what we would like to do is we would like to implement um, a bend a bend effect um, to start off we would need to determine if the um, current position is different to the previous position because if it's repainting now it's seeing it as oh slider position is always constant, constant, constant. But as, as we start dragging the slider position, um, the previous slider position will be different from the current slider position. So we will um, implement a new variable called double. This will not be final because this will be changing. Double um, previous slider position. And we will init this to zero. And then within the should repaint, we will set the previous slider position equal to the old delicate, um, the old wave painter slider position. Perfect. Okay, so within this calculate waveline definitions, what we would like to do is define a parameter called bendability. This is essentially how bendable the curve will be. And then we also want to define a variable called max slide difference equal to 20. So what the max slide difference is, is if we, if we go like this very fast, 
we're saying um, the biggest difference there can be between the current slider position and the previous slider position is 20. This is to ensure that our bend value doesn't, uh, like our, our wave doesn't curve in like um, in too of an exaggerated manner. So next we will calculate the slide difference. We will say the slider position minus the previous slider position and we will get the absolute value. So even if it's negative, um, absolute function makes it positive. And we will say if the slide difference is bigger than the max slide difference, we will set the slide difference equal to 20. So as I said, well, we will set the max slide difference equal to the max slide difference. Um, so as I said, if we uh, if we exaggerate the uh, the movement over here, we will make sure that it, it's it's not too uh, much of a bend um, by setting it uh, equal to this max difference value of twenty. Um, next, we will define a variable called bend, and for this we will define lerp double of 0, 0.0 to dependability and slide difference divided by the max slide difference. I will explain this now. Let's implement dot UI and we will define a variable called move left. Essentially, is the slider currently moving left? So if the current slider position is smaller than the previous slider position, so slider position is currently smaller than the previous slider position, then um, this bull move left is true. So we will define a variable called if bull left is true, if move left is true, Else. And within this if statement, we will control the left control point and the right control point. Um, loop double, uh, it linearly interpolates between two numbers. So it interpolates between 0.0, .0 and the bendability. So the bendability is how much we want it to bend. The, the more this value, the, the higher the bend will be, essentially. While the max slider difference it determines how fast you need to move it to get to the max bend, uh, this max bendability. And at the point we're giving it is the slider difference. So if the if we are moving this very slowly, the slider difference would be two pixels, for example, or two point zero, and uh, that will be ten percent uh, of this max slider difference. So we want ten percent of the value of the current bendability, which we have defined here as twenty five. Um, so within this move left if statement. Um, we would like to manipulate the control point. So we're gonna say the left control point equals itself minus the bend. So if it's moving left, we want the left control point to go a little bit to the left based on the bend, because we are minusing this bend value. So that will make it curve slightly this side. Um, once we implement it, once we do an example, it will be easier to visualize. For the left control point, the second one, we want it to plus the bend. to copy paste this. Um, for now, let's take this out and see if we can actually see a bend. So if you if you look now, you can see a slight bend. So as we're moving it to the left, you can see there's a, there's a small bend going on. Uh, 
for this we essentially want the the exact inverse so why when we're minusing it here we want it to add we added it there so now we want it to minus we added it there so we want it to minus and same for the last one the inverse for the right control point so if we do this then you can see there are a bend happening or a bend is happening um, as you can see it's a bit of a jagged edge bend that is because we need to also move the sensor point so for this if we move it left we want the sensor point to be slightly going this way if we move it this way we want the sensor point to move in the opposite direction so going left we want to add the bend to the sensor point and the same is true here just the opposite and there we have it we have a bend um, it's currently lagging a bit mostly because of the emulator um, i'll do a restart later and you'll see like, that it's 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 more performant but yeah this is a pretty dope pretty easy bend to do once you have like the actual wave curve initially when i did this um i did this using three um cubic bezier curves i did a curve over here a curve over there and a curve over there and uh, it was a lot less fluid and a lot less natural um as i said like uh, running this on an actual device once you compile this to notes of code it is gloriously smooth um, it's, it's a bit laggy now you can actually do a performance overlay according to this this is 60 frames a second so the human eyes shouldn't be able to see any any issue there might be um, better values that we can choose um, in the next couple of sections when we uh, do a bit of cleanup we might change these values um, also once we start doing the animation and um, the, the additional um, movement to um, specify um, the width of, of the bend uh, depending on the position um, it will also like uh, look a lot more natural um, I just want to double check that we covered everything we need to cover in this section Perfect, there we have it.